Bobs.net. Okay, uh, interesting developments here over at um, the fine folks of Fred, St. Louis, uh, Fed, Fred Data, Economic Data. Um, one of the factors I'm trying to download is the PMI Composite Index from the Institute of Supply Management. So um, I'll show you what that is in a minute. But at the end of the day, for whatever reason, it is no longer made available in Fed or Fred. Um, what I have noticed is that the website probably has changed. Um, so if I do a lookup for the ISM PMI, they have changed uh, their formatting over the last, I'll say, six months. They seem to have uh, not only changed their institute supply management, it used to be a different URL, and now it's changed. This is one of the reasons why I prefer to use something like uh, tradingeconomics.com or Quandle, uh, preferably the Trading Economics because I'll show you the video why. Um, show the exact video. The video I'm concerned hey there, with. How's your trading is, going? Is Let me show you some up. Algo yeah, Financial. Be, all right, bye bye. This video right here will show you the importance of why you need to use either of these so you don't have these issues uh, with the ISM data as a data source as an example um, because it changes and then at some point when you want to run it on in your script it breaks so this is why I prefer to always go through a one central uh, provider to provide all this type of data and again, my choice looks like it's using tradingeconomics.com. But for the time being, I am going to use the um, Quandle database uh, choice. Uh, Quandle as an option. For now. For now. Temporary. Uh, so we have here the PMI Composite Index. This is exactly what we're looking for. So you're probably asking, what is it? Well, um, it's the Producer Manufacturing Index, which is basically measures... Uh, the U.S. economy on the manufacturing level. There's also the NMI for non-manufacturing, which is really another way of saying services. But you can see the general uh, trend is down, and uh, it's all obviously due to um, a lot of jobs and manufacturing has been outsourced since pretty well the 80s, as you can see. Um, so it's weak and uh, that's all fine and good and let me just shut this email down thank you very much all right so we got that and um where can we download it so funny enough um <laughs> let me show you python even though i do love python i'm finding some very strange problems with python so if i quit my python interpreter um, just so everybody knows, I am using the Python uh, 2.711, which is pretty well standard. Um, but when I do have an old version of Quandle installed of the Python uh, package from them, um, oops, uh, you can see it's not working for whatever reason. So, the wonderful people at Quandle, and I'm, I'm planning to only stay at uh, Python 2.7.11, but when I do a pip install, um, you can see it's already, uh, already installed in my Python environment, the package we're talking. And then when I do a pip install, Quand, I'm not going to do this, what will happen is Quandle Sounds like they're needing an updated version. I think it was NumPy or Pandas. And then somewhere along the lines during that build process, it bombs. And then my pip install will reverse the uh, old NumPy or Pandas and, and restore what was there, which is currently running. So I'm not going to run that. It gets ugly. Don't ask me why Quando would do this. Uh, I don't know. Um, but anyways... Um, what I've
I've done now is I've jumped to, of all things, is R. I think it's just basically an old version of Python that I'm running, and I'm staying in that version. But I'm staying in the world of R, so I'm switching over to R. So let me show you the version of R that I'm running. We are running 3.23, uh, which I think is a fairly recent um, update from December of 2015. I like the wooden Christmas tree version. Good name. Yeah, okay, no. So that's our version that we're running. So now what I've got here is we're using our studio. Okay, so what I've done here is um, I've got an R script that I've written very quickly that will basically load in the current Quandle library or package for Python it's called packages for R it's called libraries just so everybody knows and then what we've got here is we load that puppy in uh, then we do our request of the ISM PMI so let me show you exactly what I mean so when you come here to the chart if you go under either Python you got to run this command in Python or for R you run this one. So we're doing quandle ism slash man underscore pmi. And guess what we have? We have exactly that. This is the thing I like about quandle, uh, how they can uh, get you up and running fairly quickly with um, the uh, packages and libraries for both R and Python, which is, which is good. So <clears throat> what we're doing here is we're doing a quandle request store it into a, um, I think it's a zoo object, um, I can't remember, I'm not, this is the contents of it, when I run it, and then what we do is we write uh, that data object into a CSV. Now, just so everybody knows, I am currently running it where my uh, scripts are in Python, but when I do a, um, this is the script <coughs> that will basically run from Python and then because the Python piece is broken to download the data for ISM or PMI I am going to run the equivalent of that functionality in R because I can get it working without messing up my Python version sounds fun right so if I run it um, okay this is the install. I don't think I need to install every time I run <laughs> this Quandle pack library. But you can see it's working. And let me show you the contents. I've shown you the contents of X. If I go to the proper um, uh, uh, ISM file, uh, it will reside right here, which just got created, uh, where's my CSV, oh, you know what, it kind of helps, um, but that's how it would look like if you were to run it within our studio, let me run it on the command line, okay, so we've got our ISM script right here, so what we need to do to run that script on the command line, I believe it's scripts, or script ism r. Let's see if that runs. There you go. So when you look at the results, here is that CSV that gets created. Um, and then if I load up the contents of it, which is right here, um, I'm going to load it up in Excel. That's what it looks like. And you'll have to do some wonderful, uh, let me just see here. Yeah, it's a CSV, so you have to parse it uh, in your Python. And uh, that is that. Uh, I just wanted to show you this uh, while I'm using R versus Python for downloading from Quandle. And I'm sure somewhere along the line, maybe Quandle may lose this functionality for the um, ISM PMI uh, data source them after. But it used to uh, reside in this Fred, Fed, 
and it changes all the time, and that's the frustrating part about it. Whereas if you, as I said, use either Quandle as your data source, or use, in my case, for other data I need, not just this, but other commercial data, um, yeah, I find that the uh, trading economics is the preferred one. But for now, as I said, I am using, this is the video you may want to watch to know why, but for now I am sticking with this R solution here using Quando for the PMI. And I thought I'd put a video out there, but that could change anytime when these guys or somewhere gets changed as a data source when you're trying to manage 25 of them. Um, it can get pretty hairy on top of you're trying to ma maintain it over 12 different countries. You can imagine what kind of nightmare you're dealing with. So again, you want to keep it all in one data source. This is where tradingeconomics.com comes into play. All right, enough blabbing. Hopefully you've learned something from there. All right, back to there. Oh, and you can also download the R script off my site uh, where you can go into the description and get the link uh, to the blog and you'll download it from there over and out.